And if we, and what, that doesn't happen perfectly, not for anyone, it does not happen perfectly. There are missteps, there are holes in, in our development, and nobody can mother perfectly. And thank God I was taught that because I'm not a perfect mother. And, and you find that out quite quickly that you can't do it right. There isn't a right way. There's just moving through time with in relationship. I have this line at the bottom here that if you were looking for pathology, and I want you to know that pathology, according to Ken Wilber, that integral theory, pathology is simply getting stuck. That's all it is. Really to normalize mental illness, mental health, and pathology, you just get stuck sometimes. And if you have a whole big, large part of you stuck at right at the early ages, but you went on chronologically, you grew up, you got older, something could happen, you could have a psychotic break. And that would be indicative of something kind of happening early on in your life. If you're more like, you, you, get, you develop a personality disorder, and again, disorder is an extreme stuckness, um, maybe a, a borderline personality or, or, or a narcissistic personality disorder, those are the major ones, but there are others. That's more problems around 18 months to 24 months, around in there. So you've gone further down the developmental lane. But if you, what we're trying all to do is to make it to neurosis. Basically, we're all neurotic. You know, there's nobody who's not. So if we do that, we've done well. But you can kind of see these are indicative. <laughs> neurotic is, no, neurosis is a good thing, if you look at it, because you are capable of inner conflict. The, the hallmark of a personality disorder is that you have no inner conflict. You are completely happy with what you do and who you are. Um, you would, it's good to have inner conflict because that's what helps you to grow. That, you know, that's where you begin to see it grow. So this mothering, you can see from just from our developmental <laughs> perspective how important this is. Now, one, one last thing on this uh, handout. This narcissistic or borderline personality, they're beginning to think more and more that narcissistic personality disorder and borderline personality disorder are two sides of the same coin. That if you are, say you were diagnosed or you have predominantly borderline features, you're not necessarily a disorder, but you have those features, um, then you also have the flip side as well. You have narcissistic features. And the other way around, if you predominantly relate in the world from a narcissistic kind of point of view, you have borderline features as well. You have the flip side. So let me explain what that is because I want you to understand a little bit more about how you are in the world. For example, I'm a borderline person, type person, which means along the line of development, you're, you're individuating, differentiating, that what happens is if something triggers something in you that you don't feel quite right, I immediately slide down or de-differentiate to, you know, this place of what they call borderline where um, I'm back trying to go back and merge back with mother and, you know, this person typically uh, has a lot of fear of abandonment, a lot of fear of abandonment. And that's kind of how I relate in the world is I have more fear of abandonment and my mother could call me on the phone and that would trigger, you know, a de-differentiation quite quickly I could go into my borderline self. Just talking with my mother on the phone doesn't take much. So you, you really have this like fear of abandonment way of being in the world. The narcissistic features, if you will, the being that way more in the world is really, um, it's really more of you are quite confident, quite out there, quite, you know, you don't, you don't need people quite as much. Um, you, if anything, what you, your hallmark is a fear of engulfment. So that you, you know, if people get too close, too much, too, uh, you're like, oh, give me a break, back off, because you have a fear of engulfment. This comes very straight from how we relate to our mother. For example, you go back to the toddler group example, the mother who hung on to her baby and took her in because she was insecure in that group, that baby is more likely, not necessarily, but more likely to develop fear of engulfment because the mother is always hanging where the child who the mother just drops up and walks up, they're more likely to develop fear of 